Guys, this is Tony from Tony's Tool Rental. Just want to give you a little preview of what you get with our rental service. This is the AGA N62 valve stem seal. You get everything pretty much what you need. The keeper installer. And so from here, we also included this emergency this emergency kit and just in case you happen to lose anything that could possibly get lost there's nothing to hold you back you can continue moving on so you 100% secure you can also we also include one of those valves along with the keepers here that you can practice how to use the tool and how to install them and how to install them basically it's a really awesome kit can't complain at all we also include the magnet and this special tool right here a lot of you are gonna wonder what the special tool is and I will show you guys shortly so this is what you get with the emergency kit pretty much you get the pliers you get every single thing that you need and you also get a rope which I'm gonna perform shortly to show you how to use this rope now if you choose not to use the rope we also include the leak down tester as well. Now for all the shops out there that want to get the job down quicker, we also include a spare, an extra one of these. So if you need this extra one piece, uh, you would have to call us and let us know. What this basically does is, right here, these get mounted on the engine. And these are the brackets for it, which I will perform how to do it. But if you use two of them, that means you can work two people on both sides on each bay. So, like for example, here's a firing order. So, if one person is working on a cylinder one, the other person can be working on the other side, cylinder five. Because once these, once this is a TDC, so is this one. And then from here on. Once somebody's working on cylinder four, for example, you also can work on cylinder eight. Same thing here. If you're working on cylinder six, you also can work on cylinder three as well. So if you're working on cylinder two, you can also work on cylinder seven at the same time. So this, these two here is a really quick performance. It's essentially as if you had two tools at once. So even if you have friends coming over and them lazy bastards like to just watch you and drink beer while you're working, you can put them to work as well now. The reason why I say two is because when obviously while one person is working on the exhaust, the other person could be working on the um, intake. So you guys could always switch off and you got obviously get one leg. You know, you got the legs, they go left, right. Here we go, I'll show you the picture better of. Here are the legs, left, right, front. So basically, if you're using these two at the same time, while one person is working on the exhaust, the other person can be working on the intake, for example, and switching off back and forth, helping each other out, obviously. So if you're gonna do this with two people, you should be able to get the job done literally in two days if you don't overwork yourself obviously but other than that here we got a N62 engine and I would like to show you guys how to install this tool and where the tool gets mounted so that way you understand a better view a better way I guess I should say there's a lot of people out there that even the AGA one video that they made it's never clear enough where the brackets get mounted and how to install the tool so you can start using the tool. So I will try to do my best to explain you guys on how to install the tool now and how to compress it and what to worry about and what not to worry about it. So stay tuned. So here, once you have removed the valve cover, what you're going to do is you're going to remove this right here. It's called the oil line. There's one bolt only attached to it, and then you got these little gator clips 
that these get mounted on as well. So what you want to do is, you know, use a 12 millimeter socket. Here we go. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Yep. 12 millimeter socket, and you want to loosen wherever these gator clips are. So you're gonna loosen them up and remove them. I got them already all loose. Then up here, those gator clips. They got little bolts, and those bolts are 11 millimeter socket. Again, you're just gonna loosen them up and pull them off. Now you don't want to lose these bolts because they're a pain in the neck to find them again. So you want to be extra careful when it comes down to them. Usually, there's one of those bolts wherever one of these gator things is, gator clips. And here we're gonna remove those two. And here we're going to remove this too. So once we remove them, what we want to do is this right here, this bolt is 13 millimeter socket. So you want to loosen this socket as well. And then once you completely loosen it, do not lose this bolt. Matter of fact, you don't want to lose any of these bolts. So, once you loosen this up, you want to lift this, it just, just comes off. There we go. You want to put it to the side. So from here on now, we're ready to mount the tool. So, you're going to come back to the tool. These little brackets right here is for the exhaust. Then big brackets, okay, these little brackets are for the exhaust. This right here goes with the little bracket, the smaller shaft. All right. Before you do that, these um, spark plug tubes, they got a little hole in it. And what that hole essentially does is, it comes with this flag right here. And it just goes literally right in there. Now the AGA says, once your TDC, this flag turns. Well, that's crap. It's not. This, what all it really does is, when you put the spark plug in the in, in the spark plug, you tighten it by hand. You put this in, and then when you rotate the engine, this will move. And if it goes up, means your cylinder is coming up. Then the minute it starts coming down, the minute it starts coming down again, means your cylinder is going down. So you want to find that happy medium if you use air. You want to find this happy medium to determine uh, if the cylinder is up or down. There's nothing to it. You literally could grab a screwdriver, plug it in, put it in the spark plug hole, and start turning it. If the screwdriver comes up, it's the same concept. This flag does not turn once it's inside to tell you which direction the direction of this flag doesn't mean really nothing. Just remember, because it doesn't turn. So, if you're using the rope, if you use the rope, this flag right here don't mean nothing to you. Other than if you just want to throw it in there um, and go from there, basically. So, next thing we want to do is these little brushes. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. You're gonna come back in here. Well, this is how you have your engine. <laughs> so at this point, you'll see these holes right here. You see that one right there, down there? There's one. We're just gonna push this on gently. Doesn't have to go all the way down. There's one. Right here is another one. And right there is another one. One side has four, one side has five. So here we go, so you can see better. One, two, three, four. The whole point of doing this is so that the keepers don't fall in. 
That's all you're doing is you don't want those to be pushed down. They're not in your way at all means. Whatever you're working on, they're completely out of your way. So do not push them in. Last thing you want to do is try to fish this sucker out of there. I've seen a lot of people who push them in a lot and then they'll complain, oh, we can't get it out. It is doable that you can fish it out, but it's going to take you a lot of time. And last thing you want to do is waste time on these. Also, another thing I want to mention is your springs. Your exhaust springs, right here, you see that color right there? It's got a brown cover, brown color. Those are for the exhaust. Now, if you look at, let's find a better picture here. If you look at the intake one, they got a brown and a reddish color. Now also I want to point out, very important, if you look at the keepers, this is completely wrong. You see that? The reason why I say it's wrong is because the keepers were installed upside down. You don't want this much space to be put in because right now these springs right here are under a lot of tension and you'll get a bunch of misfire. On top of that, what you also want to be careful is while you perform this job, while you perform this job, right here, you see that spring? How it sits in the V-shaped groove. You want to make sure that when you're done, you have that sit in there properly. Sometimes they come off, it's not a big deal. You can reinstall them and with just a little effort. Not at the end of the world, but make sure, I can't stress this enough, before you put the valve cover all back on, you want to check every single one of them that they're identical like this. If that spring is not, if that spring is not, if that spring right there, if that spring is not in that V-shaped groove, and a lot of times they can be tricky, try to, they can be tricky and they'll just slide off and you won't be able to really um, tell much the difference. So they, again, Make sure those springs are perfectly seated properly. There we go. And back to the spring right here. All these keepers are installed wrong. This is how much space you have. You don't want to do that. Right here. Last thing you want to do is have this much room from here to there. They should be seated almost flush. And if I were to start this engine up right now, it would have been nothing but a bunch of problems and misfiring left and right. And you'd be spending a lot of time trying to figure out what are you doing wrong. So now that we have back to the brushes, these brushes right here, the driver's side only has four, the pa no, the passenger side has four, as you can see left, and the driver's side has five of them. Now, if you don't have these brushes, just put a paper towel in there, and you should be still perfectly fine. It's not the end of the world. So now here, we're going to come, and we're going to install the tool. These little ones right here, doesn't matter which side they go on, as long as it's just going right. What you want to do is, um, you want to put them back in on the engine. So, wherever we, most likely, your engine has got three of these, three of these gators, which is very common. 
which is very common to have three of those gators. So the bolts that we took out of there, and take the brackets here. So the bolts that we took out of here, we have to remove these bolts as well. This bolt, and we're gonna remove this bolt. So once you have removed those bolts, what you want to do is, this is how this goes on. You remove both bolts, this is the exhaust, the bottom part of the engine. You put those bolts, the bracket in, you hand tie them, you don't need to go crazy on these. You hand tie the bolt, the nut, and both of them. And you put the other bracket over here now. It doesn't matter which way you want to face them. On, these, on this part right here is no right, no wrong. But either way, we're going to make them face each other. So once they're facing each other, I'm going to put the nut back in. So from here forward, now you're ready to come back to grab this tool. This tool is originally sits right there. So from here, you grab this tool. And once you come here, you put this tool through the hole and you put this in. You want to make sure that this part right here sits this way. You don't want you don't want that part to be this way. You want this part to be exactly this way. The reason why it is is because now when you come back you grab the small shaft right here. This small shaft is going to go underneath here It's just gonna sit in, just gonna sit in like this. Just like this. So at this point, at this point, this is how it's gonna go. See it? You're gonna get this one, compress this one. Once you're done with this one, you move over to this one, and so on and so on. Now, I'm going to show you how the tool gets mounted on. Now, from here on, depending on which cylinder you're working on, because these two right here are for this cylinder right here, cylinder one. This is cylinder two, these two, cylinder three, cylinder four. So now I'm going to show you how to install the um, intake one. Same concept, intake one, these have to have be installed right, otherwise you'll be off. So with these cams, brackets, you have also these bolts right here. Now if you don't have these bolts, it's not the end of the world, absolutely not, because I'm going to show you this. Right here, remember we pulled the oil, the oil line from here? And it had these little bolts. It had these little bolts. You can use these bolts. I personally prefer to use these bolts anyway. Because there's not enough threads to begin with. So even if you use the other bolts. It's just a waste of time in my opinion. So once you're here you have to remove this bolt as well. And we're going to remove this bolt here as well. From here on, this is where it has to be installed correctly. Look at the groove right here. You see the difference? So it has to sit in there properly. When, they, when it sits properly there, then it sits flat up there. 
you cannot install if you're gonna try to put it in like this way it's not gonna work if you try to install the same thing over here oops, sorry if you try to install the same thing over here it's not gonna work it's not gonna be uh, flat if you try to install it here it's not gonna let you do it now as you're working along you're gonna have to reposition one or the other for the for this rod right here to reach okay so first thing first we're gonna start right here because here's the majority of it and now I'm gonna put that small black knot I'm gonna start right there again it doesn't require anything special just hand tight it snug it And you'll be very careful with these things because these get if these drop in the engine outside the engine bay, you're screwed. You can't find them. So you want to be very careful with these. So once you kind of hand tighten this, line that up. Again, I recommend to use the original one that comes with this right here. The original one that was in the oiler line. So we're gonna mount this on. There we go. Hand tight this. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna go back and grab the second bracket. Again, second bracket fits perfectly fine, just like this. So if you're looking at it from this side, you'll have cam one intake front cam one intake back so we're gonna just I'm doing this this way because I'm recording it with one hand so bear with me here for a second so at this point I'm just tightening that nut here we go Now I'll put from the cam line that came off, the bolt that came off from here, I'm going to put it back on here. Again, did you notice I did not use any tools to tighten these. Obviously if you feel the need that these are too uh, wobbly, go ahead, use the tool, not a big deal. Just don't over tighten them. It's not going to get you anything. So. Here we go. I just want to show you as close as possible. Here we go. And here we go. Now normally, if you're just going to rent one of these, normally what you do is, obviously you, you take this off, and you would mount it on here. Again, this, you want to keep it up because it's the only way you'll be able to reach in there to get the U valve stamps. Now, this is an earlier engine from a 745 Li. The early engines, they'll have this spring right here. What you want to do is you want to loosen this up, and once you loosen this up, this whole thing comes off. So that right there is a T45. You would just mount it on there and loosen her up. So here, I can't stress this enough. Do not drop anything down here in there do not drop anything in these parts because if you drop it down here you're screwed plain and simple there's no sugar coating needed so best way to do this is normally I would recommend you to 
plug something in here like paper towel or shop towel use a shop towel don't use a paper towel so once you loosen that 44 uh, t44 that's what you get you can just lift it right out it's not the end of the world it's just a spring and now you'll have access to the valve right there the intake one so here's another view of what the tool is going to look like on the exhaust when you're ready to do it. Just exactly how you want it. And here's how it's going to look like on the intake. It's exactly how you want it. You want this to be very straight so it gives you room to do it. You want this to be very straight so it gives you room to get to it. I'm going to hold this for a second so you guys can see it. Zoom in if you have to. Do what you got to do, but this is exactly the way it should be. So now, I think this is the most amount of time saved is if you remove the spark plugs at the end. So now that you just use the spark plug socket, mount it on. A lot of people will move the spark plugs first while the valve cover is on and that alone is literally going to eat your one hour, hour and a half away. So once you remove the spark plugs, one, Two, that's why I would normally use a power tool, battery operated power tool just to remove them after I loosen them up. Three. Four. So at this point, this is where we come back here and we're going to use these, one, two, three, four. We're going to put them right on the spark plugs, one, two, three, and four. So from here on, just want to do is hand tighten a few turns, nothing too crazy. Get it in the port properly and turn away. They go exactly where the spark plug came out from. And this, these black things have uh, threads on them, so just a few turns, nothing too crazy. And same thing over here, last one. And from here on, what you want to do is, that's where you grab the flag and you put it right in the hole. Like I showed you before, it was right in the hole. And that's it. Now you would rotate the engine, but before you do that, you cannot, and I will repeat this, you cannot rotate the engine unless you have the spark plugs out of this side as well. 
This spark plug's got to be moved from here in order for you to rotate the engine. So, here we go. This is what it is. And next video is, I will show you guys how to remove that other spark plug right here, the valve cover, the servo motor, and we'll remove the spark plugs as well on the other side. And we'll make it look just like this. And I'll show you guys how to continue using the tool and I'm going to do my best to show you guys how to change valve stamps.